Jimmy Moore just posted his blood test results. Let's look at his blood. This video is a warning to anybody who's thinking about trying a low carb diet to lose weight. This man has been eating low carb for over 11 years and not only is he still overweight, but his blood tests have more alarm bells than a schoolyard at lunchtime. If you've never heard of Jimmy Moore, he's a very popular blogger in the low carb community. He has a podcast called Livin' La Vida Low Carb. Clever name, my friend. He once weighed 410 pounds, lost about 180 of those pounds on the Atkins diet where he basically ate meat and cheese and never pooed again. After losing the weight, he started to tell the world about how great his diet was, but he gained most of that weight back. And to this day, he's still struggling with his weight, but more importantly, his health is not looking good at all. I'm not looking to bash Jimmy Moore here. He's probably a great guy, friendly. I just think he fell into the wrong diet crowd and now he's stuck there after building his brand on low carb. It's like he has no other choice but to continue promoting that diet even though it's harming him. So let's start off by looking at what Jimmy eats in a day. This is a three day menu that he posted. He eats two meals a day and they're huge. Here's his breakfast, sausages, bone broth, butter with eggs, some leafy greens, thank baby Jesus, cheese, some tomato sauce, cream, chocolate, a bottle of kombucha. My god, that is a big breakfast. You can see that he doesn't eat again until 7 p.m., eight hours later. No shit. That's how long that meal takes to leave his stomach. So much grease in that meal, it's disgusting. I mean, his dinner is just a bag of Quest protein chips every night with cheese and chocolate. That man is half dairy. Let's see what it's doing to his body. Keep in mind that Jimmy Moore has been eating a ketogenic diet for the last 11 years. So first up is his cortisol levels. You can see his numbers are low. The adrenal glands produce the cortisol. Cortisol has many functions in the body, but one of those functions is to fight inflammation. Animal products produce inflammation in the body, so it's not a surprise to see that his adrenal glands are fatigued, they're exhausted after fighting this inflammation for like 11 years. You can see in his functional adrenal stress profile test here that his results are low, especially his postmenopausal numbers. Jimmy, how could you? One thing that stands out is how high his melatonin is. Our pineal gland produces the melatonin at night in order to fall asleep. So some people supplement melatonin to help them fall asleep. This really just weakens your pineal gland in the end, so it's a terrible idea. Carbohydrate rich foods help increase the availability of melatonin, so it's no shock that Jimmy on his low carb diet is having trouble sleeping. In general, it's just a bad idea to supplement any hormone your body produces naturally. You want to strengthen your glands instead with berries and various herbs. Don't take the hormones. Okay, moving on. For someone who eats such a low carb diet, I was surprised to see his glucose so high. High animal fat diets cause insulin resistance, so it makes sense. He avoids carbohydrate rich foods to keep his blood sugar down, but the high fat foods keep the sugar in the blood longer, so it ends up being much worse doing it the high fat way. It's not working, Jimmy. Another thing that stands out to me is his creatinine levels. Even though they aren't flagged as out of range, from what I learned from Dr. Morse is you don't want to see your creatinine levels rise up past 0.6. Your kidneys should filter excess creatinine out of the body. When your levels start to rise, that shows your kidneys are breaking down. They're no longer able to filter this substance out of your blood. Your kidneys are the main exit point for toxins to leave the body, so this is a highly paid attention to number in the detox world. 0.7 is scary. In 0.8, you're losing your kidneys at that point. 0.9, and you've pretty much lost your kidneys ability to filter your lymphatic waste out of the body. His numbers are just getting worse and worse. If he continues on this path, he's gonna lose his kidneys entirely. 
I mean, this is bad news. Just as a comparison, Freely the Banana Girl posted her numbers once and they were like 0.55 or something. Very healthy kidneys and that's why she's able to thrive so well on her diet. I mean, she may eats mainly fruits and vegetables with some starches at night, very low fat, vegan. It's all healthy, It's all that's the diet that heals your kidneys. Animal products break them down. His sodium and potassium are high. His anion gap is high. That basically means that Jimmy Moore ain't got no thigh gap. I'm sorry, Jimmy. One day, my friend. His protein is low, which is pretty crazy. I thought we all needed animal protein to be buff. It looks like he's actually burning a lot of his muscle just to make sugar. The problem with that, instead of eating a mango to get sugar, eating a steak and turning it into sugar, there's a lot of toxic byproducts from that process that really injure your kidneys. So that's one of the reasons Jimmy's kidneys are not doing well. His cholesterol is insanely high. When you eat so much meat, your body's just inundated with acids and your body uses cholesterol to fight these acids and lower inflammation. That's why high meat diets raise your cholesterol and plant-based diets lower it. I mean, meat causes inflammation, fruits and vegetables cool it down. I have no idea what any of that means, except for the high levels of lactate which indicate that he has begun lactating from all the dairy products he ingests. He now produces small amounts of milk in his urine and will soon be able to nurse abandoned baby cows back to health. Again, no idea what these mean, just a couple numbers are out of the healthy range. Keep on peeing, Jimmy Moore. You pee well, my friend. I can't say the same about your poo, though. There appears to be abundant levels of E. coli, when your diet is like 95% beef, you have to expect some E. coli. Plant-based diets don't have to worry about this. Whenever you hear about an E. coli outbreak in spinach or almonds, it's always from the beef runoff, the waste coming from the factory farmed cows nearby. Spinach doesn't produce E. coli. That comes from cow shit. When cows are slaughtered, they're gutted and often the bowel contents spill out into the meat, you can't separate it, even if you wanted to. That's why so many chemicals are used in ground meat to kill as much of that bacteria as they can. It's almost too disgusting to even think about, but that's the reality. If you want to eat meat, you're eating shit. For someone that eats so much red meat, his iron is really low. I guess that just goes to show you that eating red meat is not going to solve your low iron issues. Better off with plant iron from green leafy vegetables, meat iron your body can't get rid of, you store it, you oxidize your body, it's terrible. Low vitamin D, I'm surprised. Jimmy's known to take over like 10,000 IUs of D3 a day. It's not working bud. Low testosterone, I mean... All you ever hear is meat eaters saying, ah, you weak vegans, you got no testosterone, you gotta eat cow testicles. Well, Jimmy's got low testosterone. He has weak adrenals. I mean, your adrenals produce testosterone. Plants help regenerate your glands. That's why vegans actually end up having higher testosterone than meat eaters. It's ironic, but true. So I just wanted to go over some of the alarm bells that I saw in his blood tests. I mean, a ketogenic diet does not look healthy to me long term. It's pretty obvious just looking at what the diet is. It's entirely animal based almost with bits of leafy greens. It's devoid of anything good and full of everything bad. What do you expect to happen? So in my opinion, you want to get on the plant based diets. Fill your body with plants. No matter how you choose to do it, get the plants in. Go raw vegan, go cooked vegan, go anything vegan. I'm sorry, Jimmy. I'm sorry I had to use you as an example like this, but if you're going to promote a diet that's entirely animal-based, you're killing animals left, right, and center, I have to call you out on it when you're posting blood tests and they look terrible. Basing your diet on animal products is not healthy long-term. You might lose some weight in the beginning, but it's not all about weight loss. You want to be healthy. You want to regenerate all your organs and glands. Animals aren't going to do that for you. So eat those plants, my friend.